Good morning, y'all. Hopefully you're having a sexy Friday. I know I am. So today we're going to talk about uh, Wanna Poop Better. The title is Wanna Poop Better. It says, of course you do. So let's start avoiding these common foods. Um, throughout my life, I've never really had a problem going to the restroom. Um, but when I eat yummy nastiness, I do, and that's the fast food. When I eat the fast food, I get very bloated, um, and I don't go to the restroom as much. <clears throat> and when I do go to the restroom, it's not, you know, the healthy type of caca, as you would say. Um, and so this caught my attention, so we're just going to go ahead and read. Um, pretty pleased with the cherry on top. Share this video, and in the comment section below, let us know where you're from and your fitness and health goals. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Kelly. So let's get started. <clears throat> so it says, discussing one's bowel movements is no longer the sole domain of toddlers, new parents and seniors and fiber supplement ads. It's become perfectly acceptable for you, for your friends to offer up details about what certain foods do to their intestines while you're seated at the table eating those very foods. I've been talking about poop for a very, very long time. I've had hundreds of people unfollow me because I talk about poop. I've told a lot of poop jokes. Um, I think poop is very, very important. I like to call it caca. Um, there's humor around it, I get it. Um, but when you get in the health and fitness arena, you know, what you put in your body has to come out. And a good way to, to see, you know, how your body maintains and how your body accepts certain foods or certain, certain supplements is to look at your caca. And so I've always looked at my caca, you know, if I'm, if I'm super dehydrated, if I'm just mono eating, if I'm just eating tomatoes, or if I'm just eating cucumbers or grapes, if I'm on the raw food diet, whatever it is, I'm always kind of analyzing my deuces. Um, it's very, very important. That's probably the number one important thing that you can do and really, I guess, analyze and just be aware of is what's coming out of your body because it's very important. You know, if you're putting optimal, healthy, living foods, hydrating foods in your body, you're gonna be able to release that a lot easier. If you're not and you have a bunch of sludge, it's gonna be a lot harder to get that out and it just builds up, builds up and um, petrifies. So let's continue. It says, well, with the taboo out of the way, what, what, we might as well talk about it here because it turns out that yes, your poop is important. Very, very true. I actually created a, um, a poop group. It's called Poop Picks, and I think I have six members in it. So I don't know if the taboo's gone away. Um, Radiculously Authentic has over 51,000 members, but my Poop Picks uh, group only has six members. So if you are interested in looking at other people's poops so you can compare yours and people can say, hey, you know, I had a bowl of cherries, this is what my poop looks like, or hey, I'm taking a pea protein, this is what my poop looks like, or hey, I drank, you know, 150 ounces of water, this is what my poop looks like, you could join that group. <clears throat> so, continues to say, this is written by Leanne, it says, your intestinal health is critical because it nurtures the rest of your body. It says, in other words, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, or other forms of discomfort down there could also mean the rest of your body isn't absorbing the nutrients you need to function. You all, I get hundreds of messages every day, and a lot of people are constipated. A lot of people are full of caca. They're bloated. They have ab um, abdominal pain. Um, you know, they, they have blood in, their, blood in their feces. When I was on my Yummy Nastiness tour, I had blood. My booty hole was bleeding, and it's because of all of that processed food. My booty hole isn't, isn't bleeding right now. You know, when I was, you know, seven months raw, my booty hole wasn't bleeding. I, I could ninja flip out of bed in the banana splits, go to the restroom, go drink some water, go to the restroom again, go play, go to the restroom. You should be constantly releasing um, your urine and any feces that you have. You don't want that stuff to sit in your you know, in your belly, you know, if you have caca in your belly, you're going to have caca in, in your brain. You know, there's a lot of papers out there that say that, you know, your gut is connected to your brain. And so you don't want to be full of caca. You want to be hydrated and you want to be full of light. <clears throat> Good morning, Rob. So let's continue to go. Let's, let's go. It says, just in case you're wondering whether your poop is normal, Next time you drop a deuce, actually it says, next time you drop the kids off at the pool, same thing, I haven't heard that in a while, compare them to the Bristol stool form scale. 
So just Google Bristol stool form scale and compare yours to whatever they got going on over there. It says, it's not the most precise measurement of health, but it can be a good place to start. If you're often starting at something on the higher or lower ends of the scale, or you feel bloated or gassy after certain meals, it's time to re-examine the foods, drinks, and meds that might be messing with your plumbing. Especially prescription drugs, y'all. You know, I was addic addicted to prescription meds. Um, you know, when I got off of them, I had violent diarrhea out of both ends. I was, you know, profusely throwing up, um, sweating, the whole thing. When you're putting prescription drugs in your body and you're not eating, you know, that healthy of a diet, you're not, you're not going to be able to poop that well. You might not be able to poop at all. I remember one time, y'all, it was in 2008. And um, I was running amok, you know, drinking every day, all day, gambling. But this is like my first stint with that. You know, I quit that for three years and then I went really, really hard at the gambling. But I remember I went out for like three days and I was on a three-day binge. And um, I came back and I ate a big bowl of spaghetti. And that big bowl of spaghetti, that gluten, right, all that starches, it plugged me up. And I had never been constipated before then in my entire life. And I was, I think I was 27 at this time. And I was constipated for nine days, y'all. Nine days I did not go to the restroom and I, was, and I was still eating the entire time. And it was one of the scariest things I've ever had to go through of being constipated like that. Because I've heard people complain about being constipated and I was constipated for nine days and I was just full of food because I was still hungry and I was still eating but I wasn't able to release, release it. And I, and I truly believe it was because, you know, I did that three day binge and I was so dehydrated and so malnutrition that I ate that giant bowl of spaghetti and it just created a brick, it petrified, you know, in my colon. You know, it's really scary to be constipated, y'all. There's so many people, millions and hundreds of millions of people, you know, on planet Earth, you know, are constipated. And I get a lot of messages about it, too. So that's why this, you know, this article uh, caught my eye. So let's continue to go. And remember, if you're enjoying this, please go ahead and share it in groups, share it in health groups, share it with your friends and family. So here we go. Fried foods. Don't we love them? I know I do. It says, how sad is it that your mouth and Gastro, uh, gastrointestinal, I can't say that right now, track, um, will never agree about this category. It says, we always worry about fried fatty foods. There's not much good that can come from the, uh, besides that they're tasty. Very, very true. They even have air fryers out now, but when you're frying foods, y'all, those carcinogens, and, and it, you're really, there's really no nutrition in fried foods at all, and they are delicious. You ever been to those carnivals and they like fry Twinkies or they'll, they'll fry like an Oreo, right? I mean, or French fries. Come on, onion rings with some what what sauce, fried chicken, you know? I mean, I love it, but um, it's zero nutrition and they're very addictive as well. So it says, of course, we all love the delicious fried chicken, uh, tempura, French fries, uh, and the like, but, uh, but they can clog your arteries and put strain on your hearts. But the fats in those foods also do damage on their way to the bloodstream. So it says, she says, <clears throat> I call fats the most high maintenance macronutrition <clears throat> because they typically take a long time to digest. So if you are constantly eating fried food, yummy nastiness, french fries, um, I mean all sorts of fried foods, uh, uh, chicken fried rice right um you know you can do uh fried pork chops fried fried this you can fry anything basically if you're eating that it takes a lot longer to digest and there's probably a good uh percentage of y'all that have a hard time you know with constant uh consistent uh, bowel movements so it says studies have shown that diets in in saturated fats can increase constipation while this study of rats indicated that the oils used in deep frying foods can cause an an imbalance in the gut microbiota. <sighs> it says, which in turn has consequences for how the intestines handle other foods. The research on humans is less conclusive. It says, we do, however, know that saturated fat consumption can increase uh, the prevalence of the bad gut bacteria that are associated with inflammatory bowel disease. You don't ever really want to be bloated, really. I mean, sometimes like when I eat a lot of melon, if I eat a honeydew, a large amount of honeydew or watermelon, I get what I call melon belly. That's uncomfortable. Um, but when you're when when you're 
when you're bloated and you're holding in all of that stuff, it's not good. It's not good at all. You then you can start getting you know sp you know spotches on your skin. Um, you know your energy's way low. You're not gonna be able to go to the restroom. You know what I'm saying? So try to stay away from those, y'all. Um, I know on the Yummy Nastiness tour, all of those all of those fast food restaurants. You know it's mostly fried food and processed food, of course. So here's a big one: sugar alcohols. All right. It says. Though the name may uh, conjure up delightful images of strawberry daiquiris, the term sugar alcohols actually refers to a group of chemicals that occur naturally in some fruits and vegetables, but are also manufactured for use in processed low calorie foods. They don't contain many calories because your body can't fully digest them. It says, if you can't digest something efficiently, it sits in your gut and ferments. That's gross, y'all, right? And that causes gas, bloating, discomfort, and potentially diarrhea. It says, don't confuse this issue of foods fermenting in the gut with the foods that already fermented before you eat them. And that is a good ba uh, um, micro, uh, gut bacteria. So fermented foods are really, really good, y'all. Um, in Asia, they've got thousands and thousands of different fermented foods. Um, you know. Um, coconut almond yogurt, you can make your own yogurt um, that ferments um, with those antibiotics. You can make kimchi, there's thousands of different kimchis. That's different, that's fermented before you actually put it in your body and digest. What they're saying is the sugar alcohols and all that other stuff, if you put it in your body and, you, and you're not able to release it, it starts fermenting and that's what stars, uh, causes the gas, which you know I call babufas or a lot of people call farts. Um, you know, and, 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 and the bloating, right? And, and then the discomfort, you know what I'm saying? That's why if you see a lot of people that don't eat healthy, they're always just, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, I really don't feel good. Oh, I ate too much, I ate too much. You should never really have that feeling in my opinion. So it says, the next one is alcohol drinks, y'all. And if you all watch my videos, I'm an alcoholic. I'll forever be an alcoholic. I do not drink anymore. I have not had a drink since August 12th. 2016 y'all so that's that's a huge plus for me I don't have any desire to drink anymore but it says alcohol drinks it says uh, it says white is not a fan of empty calories okay that comes with alcohol drinks and their sugary mixers sometimes a night of drinking can cause diarrhea because ethanol has been found to accelerate digestion but alcohol's diuretic effect can also lead to dehydration I know that for sure, which in turn causes constipation. Either way, drinking in excess isn't great for you, as you've probably heard before. You know what? It used to it used to not be cool when I'd go out and have a steak, and then I'd go to the casino and I'd go straight to vodka, and I would like diarrhea it all out. And I'd be like, man, I just paid you know 50, 60 bucks for you know a really rad steak dinner, and then I just hit up you know the Red Bull vodkas. Uh, the gin and tonics, the Tom Collinses, the dirty martinis, the Grey Goose, and I would just diarrhea it out. And then I would realize after that I got it all out. If I wouldn't drink, I probably would have had an, a, a decent, you know, bowel movement. But then I realized if I'd go on a day or two bender after that, I wouldn't be able to go to the restroom. I, I wouldn't want to eat. When I was when I was, you know, a, a full blown alcoholic, an active alcoholic, I wouldn't eat when I drank. You know, it was, it, and a lot of people were like, man, Tom, you need to eat. I'm like, no, I just want to keep drinking and drinking and drinking. But then two, three, four days after, it would be very, very difficult for me for, for, to release a bowel movement. So it says, uh, dairy for some people. I do not really consume dairy um, all that much anymore. In fact, I, only on the Yummy Nastiness tour I had dairy. We don't keep any dairy products here. Um, you know, I do miss my Kerrygold butter, um, but, but that's about it. And I do miss cheeses. But kinda, you know, once you do that and you're on the raw foods and the living foods, you don't miss them all that much because you feel so good. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I have allergies. Oh, it must be the pollen. Oh, it's a lot of a lot of the allergies and side effects and disease that you have is from what you put in your body. So it says dairy. The normal thing that happens is people lose their ability to digest a lot of dairy. Ooh, there's a rad little lizard right here. I should show that to you. It says. Um, and the mutant, if you will, if the person who can continue to digest the foods into later adulthood. I don't know what that meant. It says, but that does not mean that everyone should avoid dairy all the time. Not everyone is intolerant, and not all intolerance look alike. 
Some people can eat cheese but not drink milk, while others can have those but ice cream is off the menu. It also says, uh, it's not a black or white thing as people want to make it to be. So even if you notice some dairy products make you feel gross, you may still be able to have fermented versions like uh, kefir, uh, which is really, really popular in product, uh, packaged products right now, or Greek yogurt, which are beneficial to your digestive health. I stay away from all that. I'm not gonna eat any yogurt unless I make it myself. You know, the coconut almond yogurt and you put probiotics in there, it's, it's literally one of the best things you all can ever have. And we've got recipes in the group. Almond yogurt, coconut almond yogurt is so delicious. You can use it as, in, you can eat it anytime. You can add berries in it, you can put it in your smoothies, you can make it as a dressing, it's amazing. Now here's a really important one right here, y'all. Gluten, all right? I've done lots of videos about gluten. Gluten, gluten, gluten. It says, a recent trend of self-diagnosing a gluten intolerance without seeing a medical profession is worrisome. Someone experiencing GI discomfort might see improvements by eliminating certain gluten-containing foods from their diet, but they may misinterpret the results. If you're eating a lot of breaded, fried foods, and you cut those out because of the breading, and then you feel better, you can't be certain what to attribute it to. It says explaining these either the gluten or the high fats could be the culprit in the scenario. On the other hand, someone may begin to feel better by eliminating some major sources of gluten, such as bagels, which are delicious, pizza, which is delicious, and then stop there. But that's not going to cut it off it's, but that's not going to cut it for someone that it has celiac disease as opposed to uh, a milder gluten uh, intolerance. It says, you don't really know it's celiac without doing the proper diagno diagnostic procedures. If they're still consuming malt and barley, soy sauce, or beer, things that also have gluten in them but are more inconspicuous, whatever that is, they could still be doing major damage to their digestive system. That right there tells me, y'all, Everything I just listed there, just stay away from. Yes, beer is delicious. Yes, pizza is delicious. You know, yes, the fried foods are delicious. All of that stuff is good. But when it comes down to it, there's way more healthier alternatives, way more tastier alternatives. And when your body gets used to it, you'll have the memory of the bun with the hot dog. You'll have the memory of the pizza hut, you know, and you dip it in the garlic. You'll have the memory, and memories are huge. And why do you think commercials and ad dollars just pump you, pump you, pump you, you know, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Fried Fruits, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Super Bowl ads, because, because it's memories. And we release dopamine when we eat, and a lot of times we eat out of stress or discomfort, right? Or depression, right? Or anxiety, right? Or we're just addicted. And so when we release that serotonin and we release that dopamine, it's all memories and it's all comfort. And so that's, they are delicious and they do taste good, but in my opinion, they're not just optimal. And you get one life. And so if, if you have the awareness and the information, right, and the know-how and the healthy habits, why not live this life at the most optimal version of you if you can do it? You know, I mean, you know, we can all get lazy and we can all get, you know, whatever and, and you know, you know, stuff happens. But if you have the knowledge and the know-how you know, you're gonna do not only yourself a benefit because you're gonna feel better, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna be glowing, you know, you're gonna be able to sleep better, you're gonna be able to go caca better, but everybody around you, if you have children, if you have a lover, a partner, whatever, they're gonna have a better quality of life because you're gonna be happier. You know, when you hit your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, you're gonna feel better if you eliminate this type of stuff. You don't wanna be bloated, you don't wanna be bent over at the toilet. You know, you don't want to be bent over the toilet or you don't want to be constipated. And so that's why I do these videos. This is a good way for me to answer questions that I get all the time because I like to learn this way and then this way we can have an open dialogue. Kelly says, Mark is right, avoid milk. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. High fiber foods. This is interesting. So this is one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't situations. When you eat too many starchy, refined carbohydrates, that usually means you're not eating the high fiber foods your body needs to create a healthy gut microbe. The good bacteria that creates your microbe consume fiber. 
producing some of the nutrients such as amino acids that our body needs. And yet, high fiber foods sometimes also cause the problem. So a lot of times people, I'm constipated, oh, you need more fiber, you need more fiber, you need more fiber. Maybe, maybe that's not always the case. Sometimes she has patients who are eating a lot of vegetables, things like celery and broccoli, and these tough to digest foods can also cause gas and bloating. This is why I like to try everything for me. I can, I, I'm really, I can operate at a very high level on uh, celery juice, um, and a lot of times that takes the fiber out too. So it says, some of those people may be suffering from irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. There's such a high percentage of people that have IBS that message me. IBS is just rampant, y'all, and it's because if you look at what people are eating, a lot of people will say, yeah, it's, it's hereditary, hereditary. I'm telling you, I have seen so many different cases where you can reverse disease, you can reverse ailments just by drinking more water. Simple, right? Simple, right? You can reverse so many things rather than go getting a prescription you know, from your doctor just by drinking more water. And be like, just challenge yourself. I'm gonna drink as much water as I possibly can for four days and look how much better you'll feel. You know what I'm saying? And you know, water's free. You know what I'm saying? At, now water is free, but you never know. You know, if you look at it, a lot of times a bottle of water is more expensive um, than a gallon of gas. You hear that? Do you see that moment right there? I desire that moment 24 seven under a coconut tree, naked or with a bedazzled loincloth, levitating, meditating, smelling like peaches and pissing glitter. And I will sit there, I will levitate there for days, y'all. I've been dealing my whole life, we've all been struggling, we've all been fighting, we've all been fearful, we've all had toxic relationships, we all have toxicity inside of us, we have bad memories, we've been abused, we've been neglected, you know. We're all fighting to heal, and peace and quiet is what I desire. That's why I'll take it to the next level where it's just, there's not chaos, there's not so much static. It's just peace with nature, y'all. It's so healing. And that's what I desire. So let's continue. Um, move on from fiber. So it says, can't we just get a fecal transplant and go back to eating everything? It says, Chen says she gets a lot of calls from people who've read up on the gut microbiome and want one of those poop transplants for themselves. While this procedure has been shown to help patients with severe C. diff infections, that's a bacterial infection in the intestines. The science isn't quite there for other indications. It says the micro, the microbiome can be such a powerful thing, but we really don't know how to use it yet. So that means people are stuffing other people's caca up their butts to other caca. So a healthy caca with your bad caca might help the bad caca get more healthy. That's how I read it. It says, and while we'd love to be able to cancel out the bad food decisions with a serving of kimchi, which I have two huge things of kimchi, you could put, if you eat eggs, you could put kimchi in your eggs. You could eat kimchi by itself. You could make um, a, nice, a nice little rice, right? A jasmine rice. Throw that kimchi in there. You could drink the kimchi juice. Kimchi is so good and it's very, very cheap to make. You know, there's just some technique to it. So kimchi is really, really amazing, y'all. Really, really has some awesome, awesome health benefits. Look at Asia. You know, their life expectancy is like, I think, 15 years above, you know, anybody that eats the common American diet. And they have, they eat kimchi all day, every day, y'all. Kimchi is awesome. And you can have a hot kimchi. You can have a sweet kimchi. You can have a cabbage-based kimchi. You can have a carrot-based kimchi. And you can mix and match with um, a lot of other raw foods. Next level, I love kimchi. So then it says, uh, really, uh, I don't know, I, I lost where I'm at. So anyways, hopefully I'll enjoy this. Um, you know, talking about poop is taboo, not to me. Talking about babufas is taboo, not to me. If you look at it, look at the Disney cartoons, look at what, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, big media, movie studios, all the Disney, the Pixar movies, they all talk, they all have, you know, Five to ten, you know, babufa scenes, fart scenes, you know, because kids think it's funny. And a lot of times, you know, there's poop humor too. Poop is poop is not funny. Poop is a serious, serious issue. And um, look at your poop. Look at your poop today. And then drink, just drink one more glass of water. Drink 32 more ounces of water. And then look at your poop 
three days from now and you'll see a huge difference. Then try to cut out fried foods. Maintain that water increase and look at your, look at your poop in a week. Then cut out gluten. Then look at your poop in a week, okay? Then cut out any alcohol, right? Then look at your poop in a week. You will see, I promise you, a massive increase in the ability to go to the restroom in your inflammation, in your ankles, in your tummy, right? In your joints, in your knees, your energy will go through the roof just by doing that. And so with me sharing that with you, with you knowing that and, and saying that, hey, I can't have a better quality of life. It's kind of a no brainer to do that, right? There you go. Thank you for joining me, y'all. I'm gonna make a couple videos today. Again, pretty pleased with the cherry on top. Share this video. The more shares I get on certain videos, you all are telling me what you like from you know my funny dance videos, my karaoke videos, uh, my certain posts that I do, humor, serious, motivation, inspirational, my little skits that I do. The more shares that I get, those that's the type of content that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna keep you know bringing the heat with y'all. The ones that don't get as many shares and interactions, you know, then I say, hey, okay, well then you know that's not you know working for y'all because I literally am here to serve you, and I'm not going anywhere. This is what I was born to do. I was built for this. I was built for this, and uh, I'm not gonna stop, baby, because it's actually therapeutic for me, and um, you know, it's my calling. So uh, the weekend is here. It's your weekend to sparkle. What what? And don't use the weekend as an excuse to give up on your goals. So no matter what it is that you want to do, if you want to drink more water, make it your mission to drink 32 more ounces of water today. If that's your mission, all right? You've got 48 hours, y'all, 48 hours. You know, when, when, you're, when you are shining bright and you're feeling good, time is the most valuable currency in my opinion. I don't have enough time and I'm gonna live to 169. I want more time. I want, two, I want, I want 48 hours in a day, y'all. I have that much energy and I wanna make that big of a difference in this world. I'm not playing it safe. I don't wanna motivate and inspire this many people. I wanna motivate and inspire the world and I need your help because you all inspire and motivate me. So get out there, have fun, kiss yourself slowly, keep it raw, stay rad, what what. That y'all wanna let's see. I thought there was y'all wanna go look for some lizards. Let's go look for some lizards together. Come on. Hi ya. Hi ya. Let's go look for some lizards. All right. Here you go. This is for every one of you. Okay. This is a weed. Look how beautiful this weed is, right? Even weeds are beautiful. We need weeds in our life, y'all, right? Sometimes they're painful, sometimes they're annoying. But even weeds have flowers, right? Let's go look for some lizards. Y'all gotta harvest that self-love. What do I say all day, every day? It's in your heart. It's in your heart. That's where it is. It's in your heart. From the very start. Let me see if you guys pick up on something. I'm gonna zoom out. And what do you see around the word love? Do you see a heart? You see that? Isn't that beautiful? It's all about that self-love, y'all. Harvesting that self-love is not being conceited, y'all. It's a superpower. It's not vanity, it's sanity. Let's see if we can find these lizards. There's normally lizards all over the place. I'll show you my compost. So I'm gonna take all of this out and I'm gonna build a compost. Look, we got the fence up. 
all of this was bushes y'all i'm still working on it see that these were look how crazy these were these bushes grew into the fence look at this it grew into the fence i've been working on this for three weeks y'all this is such like a lesson because when i get to Kauai, i'm gonna have to you know have that you know that macgyver sense of things you know be able to do stuff like this but uh here's our compost so i'm gonna uproot all of this and i'm gonna build build it where this bush is so i can actually use it but this is a compost right here we put everything in here y'all and this is amazing fertilizer amazing fertilizer hello lillian hello sarah hello kelly Hello, Kristen. Hello, Corin. Buddy doesn't chase them. Um, there's, there, it's been raining a lot, so Buddy's, we've been having a lot of frogs out here lately. So Buddy does chase the frogs. But uh, I think that's it. I'll show you one flower that popped up that's new. Check this beautiful one out we just got. Check this out. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. Look how pretty that is. Hey, look how pretty that is. Right? And look at, they're coming. Beautiful, right? So here's one right here. So this is about ready to pop, right? Isn't that pretty? Y'all, I am in love with nature. Seriously, nature hears it all. Nature is magic. That's what true magic is, is nature. Right, and then here's the Meyer lemon tree. Those aren't limes, those are actually lemons, y'all. The most amazing fragrance is the Meyer lemon flower. You know, these, these lemons, these are not limes. They're actually flowers. They were flowers before, y'all, right? So I'll take you over, I guess I'll show you. So I am, stop it. I'm really, Buddy keeps licking himself because the fleas, we're working on that. But um, I'm really, 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 really stoked about these cucumbers, y'all. Look at these cucumbers. Look at, look at this. Doesn't it look like weed tea? It looks like ganja, it looks like Mary Jane, right? Those are, this is a cucumber. And the, the leaves are like crystallized, look at, do you hear that? They're like spongy. Everything is alive and it, I'm just, look at, that's a, that's a cucumber. What, what? I mean, come on, I wanna eat that. I don't want fried food. Do you think I'm gonna be constipated if I eat this food from natural rainwater, organic? Look how beautiful this is. This makes me, this gives me the chills. Look at that. That's what I wanna eat. That's what I wanna juice right is this you don't need those supermarkets y'all you don't either invest and support your local farmers or become a master gardener yourself this is my Russian kale I have I have already um, probably had this this uh, kale three times over and it j every time you break one watch it just grows right back at first, I was like, oh, I don't want to kill my plant. I don't want to eat my plant because, you know, you, it's like your little child, right? But I just like this. And it will grow back. Look at that. And this is kale. Look how beautiful this is. Look at that. You know what I'm saying? Delicious. And then I got my tomatoes. And, you know, I'm learning here, y'all. I, I wasn't watering it nearly enough. Um and so I'm watering it three times the more amount than what I was before. I haven't put any um, lime down in the soil, so that was a mistake. Um, I grew my radishes too close, and uh, these cucumbers, see this cage right here? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna blow your mind. See this cage right here that I had to put here? I need a taller one. These things have brains. I literally believe plants are alive, just like water. I, I think they have a consciousness. And the reason why I say that, how does a plant know to grow these little things around here like that? Right? Isn't that like wicked? Like that's a cucumber plant and I put this thing and it wrapped those around. So there must be some consciousness. There must be some, 
energy in there and say, hey, we need the ninja flip on this cage so we can have better stability, so we can release our babies, which is the cucumbers. That is so wicked. Look at that. See how they do that? Look at that. This turns me on. Tinder and, you know, you know, chaos and casinos and mindless sex with all that stuff and drug use and gambling, that doesn't turn me on anymore. This turns me on. Look at this. These are my babies right here. That's what turns me on. What, what? Look at that. All right, y'all, I love you. It's your weekend to sparkle. Get motivated. Make somebody smile. Kiss yourself slowly. Keep it raw. Stay rad.